Hello and welcome back. This is episode 32 of our Disco Elysium playthrough. Uh, last episode, it was a little bit of a longer one, sorry. Um, we got a confession out of this guy whose name has escaped me. Um, but as we were wrapping up the conversation, so he shot uh, the mercenary. This phasmid appeared. And Kim can see it too. Um, so it's not just us going crazy uh there's an actual phasmid here which is the thing that the zoologist cryptozoologist was searching for that kim was guaranteed uh was a fake it's like a mythological creature but um yeah here we are instantly indian phasmid the creature stands on long stilt like legs antennae hanging from its head like woman's hair white and curled at the tip it's no more than five sets away from you Reed like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves from its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel to reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Perception. The hiss is different from the strings you've heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Uh, 83. Might be good. Listen carefully. S <laughs> uh, let's try 83s. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps towards the phasmid. The creature let out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like, it's, like swallows. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. Uh, you're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chiton of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hand up slowly. The insect stops its stridation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinpricked eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Perception. Suddenly there is silence. No. Stop. Be afraid. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life. Uh, stridulating, a set of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect, small head. Take the picture, Kim. Okay, with a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect motion while it's being aimed at by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three, the man whispers his voice and if it moves, you jump back, I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. A shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like a blade of sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light, head turned towards the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. I got it, you hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develop onto the photo paper in her hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks across the reeds and the sky, and you as a shadow before it. Uh, carefully pet the scythe-like forearm. No, I feel like it's a bad idea. The whiskers are probably a bad idea. Back off. A shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life like a record containing where it left off. Continuing where it left off. In a swaying praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stri striagulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You're right. Little bubbles from the mouth parts of the creature. On its segmented lower lip, it looks like foaming slowly. The foam is white and then yellowish. Uh, the faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Whisper to Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade like burnt caramel. As the insect moves its mouth part, uh, masticating, the little bubbles begin to burst one by one. Letting out the same smell like summer burning. Tell me what you're doing. Nothing. It's simple, gives off no flicker of light, no one is home. The twitches of its limbs are insect-like, unknowable, perhaps without substance even. I want to know your mind. 
It spread too thin among its limbs, performing incomprehensible operations on the world. And you, looking at it mouth slightly open, you cannot even imagine what it thinks. Suddenly, another flash of pain, worse than the one before. The taste of blood in your mouth. The insect tastes it too, twitching suddenly. Do we have any skill points to level up? We do. Inland Empire. Done. Let's try it again. Why? It's locked. Why is it still locked? Let's disengage slowly. As you back off, the phasmin also takes a step back into the reed. Something tells you the next time you engage and disengage, it will probably flee. The arthropod follows you with its antenna. As you back off, the cracks and hisses of the tape that come to an end grow more distant. Let's try again. Tell me what you're doing. Damn it. We don't have any more points, do we? Actually... Uh, I want there to be more. Mute from the insect foams from its mouth parts, tilting the plates it fused together it had from left to right without reason. Suddenly, another flash of pain. Worse than the one before. Okay. As you're turning away, the phasmin mirrors your movements, stepping on the water. The long limbs carry its feather weight without breaking its surface. Ah. Oh. And just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea, calm mirror-like skipping stone, leaving another, leaving nothing but circles on the water, and something under it. In the place of it stood bobbling there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with his hand raised to his brow. You can walk on water. Apparently, yes, like a water strider only. I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He puts his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Oh, the helmet from the armor. And the rifle. A common, oh, the scope for the rifle. What did I do with that? Oh, there, there it is. Okay. Let's go deal with our, our suspect. I should probably put the gun away. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. So how could you not see the phasmid? See, he stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Droz? The man does not respond. He keeps staring black eyes glazed over, bulging from the sockets, his gap tooth mouth shaking. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some sort of psychomotic immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Droz? The trembling mouth appears to be appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go to get help. We will need to be medical first, but I'm afraid. What's happened to this man? Old age and shock. Old age and shock, yes. The appearance of the phasmid in conjunction with the stress for the arrest he spent his entire life here. For him to leave would be... Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. All right. Um, wow, <laughs> to, to say the least. The phasmid. I didn't expect it to be real. Um, it's disappointing that we couldn't uh, connect with it. Like, um, but the luck of the dice, huh?
It's strange that we're just leaving him there. Use the boat to return to the mainland. Okay. Where's our boat down here? Come on. Let's return to the mainland. Let, we're done here. He says, adjusting his glass, he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Checking it to the mafia. You got the tide brought in. Says a man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes as he tilts Harry, his head. You're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Rhetoric, whatever this is, it's completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from whirling in rags, but where is his sunglasses? No one else seems bothered. Who are you Hello, people? I'm Trant Heidelstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar, and this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special consultant Trant Heidelstam, patrol officer Judith Mino. Hi. We have come to scrap what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. Rhetoric, the scene is making even him feel though he has to justify your actions. Need your help with something later. He had suddenly regaining his confidence. Authority, as if he recalled that he is in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty this boy. Is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Um, thank you, Lieutenant. Meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. She says warmly, flashing Kim the tiniest of smiles. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the situation that's about to befall you. Are What's this about? Help you? Trant, I believe this is where you come in. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Authority, what does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Um, how did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us you were here. I understand. Okay, Gart told you. Uh, um, and people in the street helped us too with your whereabouts. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. So Trent Heidelstam, it turns out to be Special Constable Trent Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trent Heidel Stam. I never said I wasn't Trent Heidel Stam. Wait, what's up with the kid then? Mikhail? Mikhail's my son. Oh yeah, what's up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the field building and Martinez beachhead. Um, and Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Special consultant. Again... I was asked to share my take on some of the more fringe academic theories developed in Konstein in the 30s, for example, partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. Let's move on. You mentioned a task force? Yeah. Major crime units under Lieutenant Dubois and Vic Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Refresh your memory. It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude... Trent, 
um, fucking Harusim and Gulamar Bevy. He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you, you're part of this shit show. Like, who's Gulamar Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Uh, Gulami Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we want, we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Trent, because I'm forcing him to stay. Logic. Is this Julia Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Um, with sunglasses like you were? See there. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me. I'm G Bevy. It was going to be funny. But then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. Alright, so what does this unit do? Do it a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit tier now, Harry, because of you. The 41st isn't... He trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There's a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms, and looks at you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said you were cramping your style. You're a detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. Um... Um, I've said all those things. I'm not like that anymore. Yes, you're sorry. You're the sorriest cop who ever lived. Nothing has changed, Harry. I've heard this repetent shit a million times over. Now this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Uh, Trot, he turns to the blonde. This is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning, all good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Rhetoric, meaning you forgot both who you are and the definition of money, Iola Pale, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, he makes air quotes, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I'd like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Uh... What do you think happened to you, neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Wait, you think I'm so poor I lost my... Uh, I made it all up. It might have something to do with the anomaly in the church. High experience detective. Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be my be me anymore. It was a defense mechanism. That's it. Psychotra psychotraumatic amnesia. Trant. He turns to the special consultant. I can go for that. Shithead, shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe their own mind. However traumatic it gets, that doesn't happen. You're lying or insane or both. But Detective Vukamir, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times after some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into that mural. Reaction speed. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the new world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes, practice and then they use alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if it is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. He just as was the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon, listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years as a police detective. He's like a magnetic reader on the world tape, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry has been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He nods. He just needed for it to end. Okay, Trent, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. <laughs> will he or will he be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a Cretan now? I want to know that. He's not a Cretan, and, he's, and he is able to do work. If not for in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Um, I'm ready to lead again. No one ever mentioned that. He looked at you and then front. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the potty, or do we need to get him a disability pension? What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Just stand there. Yeah. Just stand there, really. It's cool. Really? No. Now we discuss that. He points to the water. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? What is it there, Harry? 
Um, I don't know what. I drove into the ocean when I was drunk. So refreshing. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I've got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain grip on the smooth plastic and the badge slips out of your hands. 83. Nice. Not today, badge. Um, the drama is unnecessary. I got the badge all as well. The man is unimpressed by the piece of plastic in your hand and your gun. Rhetoric, as if having your badge and gun are a natural state, not an achievement. Uh, my gun is right here. Whoa, he has it. And he didn't drop it. He wipes his barrel mock. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put the thing away before you kill someone. Um, I quit drinking. Forever, it's only me in this boring hellhole now. I don't buy it. What do you smell like? A corpse then? He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. No idea what you're smelling. I washed death off me. Wait, and maybe because of the pheromone. Yeah, I've handled an actual corpse. Yeah, it's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry, I smell bad. Yeah. A bit of a week. You're drunk and you let a suspect escape. A certain classy because you were too drunk to assess her flight risk. We've read the reports, Harry. Uh, Lieutenant Kutsugari. We know. Um, it's a small detail in a huge case you know nothing about. Sure, if it's part of your master plan, let's not even get into the other suspects. The one who shot herself in the head. Another detail. Or the fact that you're Everett Claire's little peon now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Repair that. Compared to seven people who were gunned down in the streets, a literary led with blood, red with blood, Harry. There's a fucking mass murder. He did everything he could, the lieutenant interrupts him. We did everything we could. The company hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what would have happened. Uh. Um, I also saw, yeah, it was a massacre. We got what? Where the hell were you? Don't make this harder for yourself, he says in a lowered voice. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. Authority. He thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. He brushes a stray hair out of his iron cuffs. You spent the week with him on this case. What's your take? On the case? On Lieutenant Euphreta Dubois. Well... The drinking, the gun losing, also the losing the badge, that's all true. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the self-flagellation uh, issue. He likes to apologize profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's just strange, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true blue moralist, a man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable, but also at odds with his behavior. And then there's a motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I've seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him anything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped working on the case. He is tireless, madly driven. And he solved it, near perfectly in one week. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution. He's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island camouflage in the reeds. It unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the Insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo and shows it to the officers across the yard. Rain comes down, he covers the glossy photo and the phasmid with his hand. You hear a gasp beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Say nothing. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence. Exhibiting a strange um, atypical dementia, he fell in the stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Uh. Probably not connected per se, but the perpetrator knew of her extensions. So, it is connected. 
I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's, I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. R Empathy, this very, very sad man who's just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Rhetoric, now make your case. Now is the time, now or never. Um, a previous head of the Dubai Union was assassinated by Akula. There was also a dead man on the boardwalk. I also looked into the mystery of the Dune commercial area. The killer, um, we have a strong motive for him. Uh, the special consultant raised a revolutionary martyrdom. Uh, yeah, the custom started with Gar Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Lazovich. The revolutionary saw this as a uh, chauvinist activ at atavism, so they used martyrdoms, derived from the mother's name instead. The man's mother was Lillian, his Lillian's son, Lillian Lilinovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trent. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. Logic. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he'd heard this detail. It must have convinced him. Um, out of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, 70 something. A strange psychosexual fascination, the result spending all this time in solitude on the island of the bay, and trauma too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's hand, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Um. Uh. Way more than that, I'll win it back with this. My masterpiece, they'll teach this in cop school. I did all I could. I'm still not completely sad. Uh, I did all I could. I've never doubted you can pull yourself together and work in bouts. Bouts don't last. I still smell the booze on the wind. Perception. God damn it, doesn't it ever leave? It is there, like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. Um, the previous head of the Dubois Union was assassinated by Akula. There was also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. Yes, yes, fallen through the gap in the boardwalk. How did you know I found him? There was a, bo a body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of the funeral arrangements and family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person detective. Still a point for you. No denying it. The previous head of the Dubois Union was assassinated by our killer. Lieutenant lowers his voice, just a little. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open. In Martinez, where Everett and Edgar Clare have ears everywhere. Reaction speed. And eyes too. You return from the island, must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Everett would be big. The consultant too has lowered his voice. I would prefer not to partake in anything union related, for political neutrality. Logic. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. I also looked at the mystery of the Doom commercial area. He shrugs. I don't know what a Doom commercial area is. Um, that place. Why? That's not what you're supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just chasing up a lead and ended up advising a local shop here. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Dodge the bullet there. For a moment, it seemed like you were just wasting time. So what do you say? Do you want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to, but you've discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to. Jude? A quick nod. Anything that ends the trial, it's okay with me. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Am I a dirty cop working for Laputa Madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think you're too unstable to work for mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No bob mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Okay. Uh, the Fazbear needs to tell Lena about it. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Trabarkle Road in Jamrock. Remember? A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Trabarkle Road. She told me about the Phasmid. Uh, it's on our way over, near where you live, and Perdition. She looks at Vikramir. Fine, if we drop you off on the way. 
She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmin. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible we're good for the deliver some positive news for a change. Uh, Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I'll go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It'll have to be good to cover all this. Then I'll have a serious talk with my captain. About what? He pulls up the collar and looks around the cold spring reflected in lens of glasses. Detective, we just stopped a small scale war. Something is happening in Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be hard spring for the RCM. We need to be ready. Infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that station 41? Uh, talk to Captain Price. I'd rather not ruffle feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work at precinct 41. Work with Price. A crooked smile quivers on his lips. I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Estacor would fit in. Am crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. Rhetoric. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered. You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. The man turned very serious all of a sudden. I would have to tie things up in GRH first, but I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbour. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant. Piles that we'll need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. All right, let's go. Good. She looks easier than Vic with me. Fuck it. Let's go. The man points down the street. Trant brought his motor carriage. It's 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Shivers. The great distant hums in the falling rain. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls. Fire traps as far as the eye can see from Main Street to Grand Curran, from Prince 841 to Boogie Street, forking into the rain swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman is sits near a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint de Gras, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped hole. Chamber. An old south man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Estacor. Torson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vicomi? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Skibbert looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Pompey Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office and the curtains are drawn. Harry, our man, he'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Uh, Goto returned to the list. Minto, of course. Judith Mont. Wonderful. The woman looks. Then we can please just go back to Jamrock now. Is that it? I, I honestly, I love that game. I honestly thought it would be longer. But that was an awesome game. I really, really enjoyed that. I am super disappointed that it's over. Um, like, I, I, I wish this game could just go on forever. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was really, really good. Um... There's really... I, I just question though... Like I had so many different thought bubbles. I had There were so many things I didn't unlock. Like how do I, how do I get to those? Did I wrap this up fairly quickly or... Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> um, all right. On that note, um, thank you very much for watching. That was an awesome game. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. If you've got any suggestions for any new games, please let me know. I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, apart from that, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.